Hello guys, welcome back to another video and in today's video I'm looking at the TP-Link AC1200 Wi-Fi range extender. Now, as I said in the last Wi-Fi extender video I did, I don't normally recommend these, but these dual band TP-Link ones seem to be pretty good. I have already tried this one out and it is good and so is that other one that I tried make sure you're getting a good one they're only really good if they're placed in a good spot if they're placed too far they tend to not be very good it just depends what you're getting whether they're good these go for 30 pound on amazon but i bought it off a of facebook marketplace for a fiver so that's the only reason i bought it um and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use it at my dad's house since the wi-fi in my room there is shit um it's not really needed here we have I have a separate router in my room, there's the BT hub downstairs and we also have BT whole home Wi-Fi. So this is not needed, but I will show it working here and I'll show it working at my dad's as well. And it's also got an access point mode, um, which is pretty good because although you could just buy separate um, access point or another Wi-Fi router and use that as an access point, these are a lot smaller. So you could just have this plugged in and then just have a cable running straight into it. There's no extra power block or anything like that. Um, so say so if you wanted to use it now as a Wi-Fi range extender and then run Ethernet in the future and use it as an access point, you could do that. It's a dual band one, so it's got 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. What you can do is you can connect this to just 2.4 gigahertz from the router and then connect your devices to the 5 gigahertz on this all the way around which is pretty good. It's got an external antennas. It's got one that shows you whether you have a strong connection. Um, something that I recommend with these is don't put it in the room that's got the bad signal because this is going to receive bad signal. What you What's really recommended, if put it in a room that's close by, that's got good signal, put it in there and then connect to this from the room with bad signal and you'll tend it works a lot better. So let's get into it. Here we have the instructions, a quick installation guide. So here it is. It's quite it's quite a little device really, it's not that large. So yeah, here we have it here, and then boom, the Wi-Fi antennas. This one tends to be it is a lot stiffer than this one, but I don't know whether that's just on my specific one. Uh, glossy plastic. They have one that looks exact my mate's got one that looks exactly the same as this. But it's only got 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, 300 megabytes. So it's only got two lights on the top, uh, which is quite, I don't know. I just find it odd that they've got the same things. And yeah, it shows all the SSID is. And yeah, and it's got an Ethernet port on the bottom, um, which can be used for the uh, access point mode, which I talked about. Or you could use it, say, if you've got a device nearby this that has to be on Ethernet, like a PC. I know a lot of people use these to get internet on their PCs. You can just use it as like a Wi-Fi adapter, really. So plug it in, connect to your Wi-Fi, and then plug a device in on Ethernet. Or it's just quicker to do that anyway. And then it's got that little reset pin there as well. Uh, so, yeah, quite a nice little device, really. So they recommend plugging it in in the same room as your router and then moving its location because obviously if it's in a bad location you might not be able to connect it very well so that's what i've done i've got it plugged in down here and then the router is over there this is not the main one but i'm just this is the one in my room so i'm just going to use this one for example and i'll show you it in its proper permanent use at my dad's house once i'm there so basically you need to go into your wi-fi to set it up and click on tp link under store Extender, it's already in my networks because I used it with the other one. It was the same Wi-Fi name, so it already comes up. So there we are, connected to that. No internet, obviously. And then you could either go to the website, which is really easy, or use the TP-Link Tether app since you can use that to monitor it and other sorts of stuff. TP-Link Tether, here it is. Now logging into it. So you can create a password for it. So... You, so no one can just connect your network and just start changing settings on it, you know. So, yeah, you have to select the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz ones separately. So it shows all the 2.4 gigahertz that it can find. 
um, which is a lot more than what I saw on my phone. But yeah, Charlie's room Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz. And then you do the same thing with 5 gigahertz, but it obviously picks up less since the signal strength is less. And then you can edit your Wi-Fi name and passwords for that. That's fine. Actually, I'll change it just to Charlie's Wi-Fi. Because obviously it's not in my room anymore, is it? And then it will apply your settings. And yeah, you can confirm the location. So I will change it, but I'll just say, yeah, it looks good. And then it gives you a thing to join the Wi-Fi. So for the sake of the video, we're just going to pretend that this is the main router and we want to extend it to get signal fully in the house. Uh, I'm going to show you a good example of a good location to have it. Here is the router. So this, is above, this room's above the garage. Now, um, in the back end of the house, you do not get any 5 gigahertz signal. Now, I've set this up before and tried it and that before I've done the video, so I already know. So basically, my room's like here, so we would say the router is about there, over there sort of thing, and then in the kitchen. Now, it still works... It still works okay in here. I get pretty much the full speed connecting to it. But we go in here, you connect to five gigahertz. Uh, a lot of the time the five gigahertz does not even come up. And if it does, you get like one megabyte. And here's where people make problems with Wi-Fi extenders. They'd think, oh, the Wi-Fi is really bad in here. We'll go plug it in here. I tried that, it boosted it a bit. We got four megabytes. But no, what the good thing to do is, in here, the Wi-Fi is still decent, but it's not that far from in there. So plug it in here, and this still gets a really good signal, and it is close enough to that room that I still get the full speed by connecting to five gigahertz. So that is actually really good. If that room still has decent, if that room has decent signal, then it's fine to put it in there because at my dad's house I will be putting it in the room that's got bad signal because there's no really close plug sockets that's anywhere near that room on the landing so sometimes you do have to put it in the room but I still get a decent I've tried a wi-fi extender in there before I tried that little travel router in there and it worked fine so this should as well I'm hoping um but yeah see all the lights are blue so yeah let me connect to it now so as you can see, I'm connected to the 5 gigahertz. so I still get a decent enough signal. Um, I'll show you the speed in here, actually. Um, this is, it's probably not best to do examples with my connection, since mine is not that fast. Um, but oh well, so we got 28 there. So now let's connect it to the extender. So... Yeah, so we are pretending that this was the main one and we just ignore the BT whole home and BT. So, yeah, that's what we got. Oh, wow, that upload. We do not normally get that fast upload speed. We normally get about five. That must have, it must have switched to 4G or something. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it is pretty much the full speed. Um, I think you'd probably get a bit more ping, like latency and that. Uh, but no, it seems fine. Let me wait for the upload because that was really weird getting 16. Yeah, I thought so to about five So yeah, that's pretty good But obviously it's gonna be fine here But we go into this room. I'll show you the example I'll try and show you the normal five gigahertz network So yeah, we're in here and the Wi-Fi extender is in there plugged in So as you can see I still get a decent enough signal from the Wi-Fi extender but as you can see my the five gigahertz from my room isn't coming up at all in here obviously you could just connect to the 2.4 but the five gigahertz is better and the 2.4 isn't very good in here either but look adding this we still get pretty much the full speed yeah look the full speed so if that was my main route this would actually be a good purchase but obviously we have bt whole home and that so this is not needed here so this will be pretty good at my dad's house but yeah, it does work pretty well. So yeah, that's pretty good. Quite happy with that. Um, obviously, it's not in permanent use here. But I will show you it again in its permanent spot at my dad's house. And I'll just do like a little mini review on it. But I think this is really good. Well, for the price I paid, it's 
Of course it's good, isn't it? For a fiver, you can't really complain. But even for its full price of £30, I think that is pretty good. I think it's been a good two months since the other part of the video, but I've forgotten to film it. But this is its permanent placement at my dad's house. As you can see, it's not the best placement. It's on the extension lead on one of these multi plugs. And then the antennas don't extend fully out, but they're extended as much as they can. Um, now, my dad's internet is definitely not the best internet to demo how good this is because this is slow. But basically, this is at the back end of the house and the route is at the front. Um, yeah. And as I showed you when setting up, you can have it set up. You have the operation mode so that this connects to the router at 2.4 gigahertz and then connect your devices to this at 5 gigahertz. Now that's what I've done since the 5 gigahertz does not reach properly to this end of the house. But going into its settings and setting it up like that is not how I recommend doing it. Because when you set it up like that, only 5 gigahertz devices can connect to this. If you have any 2.4 gigahertz devices, you can no longer connect them. What I recommend doing is, as I showed you when you set it up, you connect to the 2.4 gigahertz main network, and then connect to the 5 gigahertz one. Basically, just set it up as normal, click to connect to 2.4 gigahertz, and then when it gets to the 5 gigahertz bit, click skip. That's obviously if you only want to use it at 2.4 gigahertz. And then what I have done is separated the Wi-Fi bands so that the 5 gigahertz one is separate so I know that I'm connecting to 5 gigahertz. Now in a lot of cases I would say Wi-Fi extenders can actually make your Wi-Fi worse if they are not needed because a lot of the time people get them when they don't need them and it ends up making it slower and more confusing. But in this case, let me show you. This is why the video quality is bad, because I'm not filming on my phone. I'm filming on the 2016 iPhone SE. <laughs> but this is it connected to the main Wi-Fi downstairs. I'm not sure whether it's on 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz, but we'll just do a speed test. Now my dad's internet's not fast anyway, but that's actually not the worst it's been. Like if I was sat on my bed, it would actually be even slower than this. And his upload speed is not that good either. Just messing around with this. Yes. So that's actually not that bad. If I was sat over there, it would be even worse. But now let's connect to my room, the five gigahertz one, the 2.4 gigahertz from this is not the best, but Really, you want to be using 5 gigahertz anyway. Now let's show you. There we go. Look how much better that is. Obviously, it's still not the fastest, but this is pretty much the same as my internet at home. And then, what I also want to demo for you is what I've got my MacBook out for is using the ethernet port on this device to see how good that is so and what i will do on here is turn my wi-fi off as you see that's connected to the extender as well and wait for this to flash up to know that yeah it's working So yeah, it's even faster on the laptop it is, through the infinite cable. And let's wait for the episode. Sorry how shaky this video is, because this iPhone SE does not have very good stabilisation or anything. But yeah, this is like the fastest I've ever seen their internet. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know why I'm showing you, but like, for the camera. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video about this Wi-Fi extender. It's 
been in the making for like two months because I've been forgetting to do it because I've forgotten to film it when I'm here I wanted to show it in its permanent place and like the improvement that it has made on the Wi-Fi here but I've been forgetting because I'm only here every weekend but yeah now hopefully it doesn't take me long to get this video out because I don't think I've uploaded in a couple weeks let's get this up actually yeah so today is Sunday the 12th of June and the last time I uploaded was about three weeks ago so I really do need to get cracking, make some more videos. I should have a video about the MacBook coming that might be before or after this video, I'm not sure. But a video about the MacBook, obviously this video that I'm doing now. I'm not sure what else I've got coming, but I should hopefully be getting back up and uploading stuff again. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Bye. <laughs>